whatever we type as a program, that is what I will call it as a source code. Compiler takes complete source code and it compiles the program. All my program will be in the form of assembly level instructions. Loader is responsible to load the executable files to the RAM is what you need to remember. Hello everyone, I welcome all of you to the beautiful chapter that's Inside Program Execution. So what exactly this Inside Program Execution is all about? So most of you will not be knowing what exactly is happening inside the execution of the program. So here is a class for all of you to understand what exactly is happening inside the program. All right, let's understand this in detail step by step in this chapter. So what is that I'm going to discuss in today's session? So please make a note of it. The basic flow of compilation. This is going to be very, very important for all of you. How exactly the compilation of the program is happening. So most of you will have a question. What exactly compilation is all about? So let me talk about this in detail in the coming slide. Keep watching. And the next one that I will uh, discuss is understanding the translator process. How exactly it is translating the program. Basically, we all know that our program will be in the form of high level language. So how do we translate that to the machine level language? That is what I will call it as a machine code. So fine. So that is what I will be discussing it with you in this topic. And the next one is compilation process in detail. In this compilation process also, we have some different steps. So I will be discussing that in detail. So let's understand this. A basic flow of compilation is the first topic in my presentation today for all of you. So you all know that whatever we type as a program, that is what I will call it as a source code. So my program is a source code now. So it will be in the form of high level language because I know only English. So using English, I will be typing my program. So that is what I will be calling it as a source code. So basically the computer will not understand the high level language. So for that, I need a person who can translate my high level language into source code that is machine level language. Let me not uh, confuse you guys. So it is very simple. I have the high level language. I need the machine level language. I need somebody to translate it. So who is this translator now for me? I have two important people with me in this today's class. So that is compiler and interpreter. So compiler, please make a note of it. I have two people, compiler and interpreter. So compiler and interpreter, I will call them as a translators who will help me to translate the high level language. So high level language to what? So translator will help me to convert it into machine level language. So we had some watch called HMT. Okay, we had some watch called HMT. So just rearrange it. It is HTM. Easy to remember. So fine. So we got to know that we need some two translators that is compiler and interpreter. Let's understand this compiler and interpreter in detail now. So I have compiler and interpreter. How exactly this compiler and interpreter is working? Let's discuss this. Compiler takes complete source code. Compiler takes complete source code and it compiles the program. But when it comes to interpreter, so interpreter will not take the complete source code and it interprets. It takes only one line at a time. So here when it comes to compiler, the entire program will be compiled in one go. But when it comes to interpreter, only one line at a time. So that is the major thing that you need to understand at this point of time. Both of them are converting high level language to machine level language. But when it comes to compiler in one go, the entire program is getting converted from high level language to machine level language. But when it comes to interpreter, what happens? It converts line by line. It converts line by line. So I will be discussing in detail with respect to compiler and interpreter in my coming sessions. 
So as of now, you just have to understand only this much. So fine. Let me tell you what exactly the basic flow of compilation. So in detail now. So I have these many steps. All right. So these many steps are very, very important. I want all of you to make a note of this four steps. The first step that I have is pre-processing. What is the first step that I have? I have pre-processing. That, that is the first step in my compilation. The second step that I have is compilation. And in that compilation, I have two different steps. The first one is analysis. Second one is synthesis. So fine, I understood that. So what is the third one that I have? The third one that I have is assembly. And the last one is linking. Along with this linking, I also have loader. So fine, this is the different steps that I have. So what exactly I will be doing with this pre-processing? So this is very, very important that I need to understand. Imagine I have the source code. I mean to say that whenever I write or whenever I say source code, you need to understand that that is the typed program what I have. So fine, I have the source code with me, which I have typed. So in the first step, what exactly I have, that is pre-processing. When it comes to the first step, I will be removing all the unwanted comments from my source code. So that is what is happening in my pre-processing step is what you need to remember. So what exactly is happening? All the unwanted comments or the comments, whatever I have, I cannot say that. No, it's a unwanted comments, obviously, but that is not required for the execution of the program is what I would like to say at this point of time. So fine, I will be removing all the comments, whatever I have. So with the help of the first step, that is pre-processing. The second step that I have, so that is compilation. Please make a note of it. I have two different steps. So the first one is analysis. And the second one is synthesis. What exactly is happening in the analysis? So let's check that. So when it comes to analysis, I have already discussed uh, pre-processing. Let me discuss about compilation phase. In this, I have two steps as I already discussed. Now let's understand analysis. What exactly will happen with respect to analysis? Please imagine I have the source code in that I will be identifying a different tokens that I have. So I will take out all the tokens and I will be forming a table. I will be forming a table. So please understand, I will call that table as symbol table. What exactly this process is doing? Imagine I have the source code. So in that source code, I will pick out, I will identify the different tokens that I have. I will take all the tokens and I will be storing in a table and I will be calling that as a symbol table. First, in the compilation process, the table will be formed. That table is what I will call it as a symbol table. So fine, we understood that. What exactly will happen in the next step? Please observe carefully. In the next step, especially in the synthesis phase, what exactly will happen? So please, you need to understand we have something called syntax tree. My source code, whatever I have, by looking at my source code, it will generate the syntax tree. What exactly it means? Sir? I need to identify the errors. I need to identify the syntax errors. Then how do I identify that syntax error? So by generating the syntax tree, I will be able to easily identify my errors. Then how do I generate the syntax tree? How exactly it is looking like? So tree in the sense, obviously it will be in the form of like this, right? This is what I will call it as a tree. Imagine I have an expression, something like this, three plus four into three, All right? So now, which one has got the highest priority? Star has got the highest priority. Yes or no? Yes. First, this will happen. This operation will be performed. Then this addition will be performed. Yes or no? So please understand that. Am I correct? 
so first how do we evaluate the expression so first we will identify the priority of the operator we have the bodmos rule right In the same way we have the operator precedence so based on the priority of the operator the expression will be evaluated that's what we have seen so fine we know that how do we evaluate this expression so let's start okay let me write like this all right so i have star so what is the value that i have i have 4 into 3 i have 4 into 3 whatever i am multiplying 4 threes are 12 so this value plus 3 okay so this is what i will be performing this is what i will call it as syntax tree this is what i will call it as syntax tree so i will be converting or the compiler will be converting all my source code into this syntax tree so using this syntax tree it is very easy for me to identify any syntax error this is what you need to understand at this point of time so we are in the second step please don't forget so the first one is pre-processing please understand the second step that we have is compilation phase okay this is what we are trying to discuss so we have understood what exactly analysis and we have understood what exactly synthesis is all about so let's understand what exactly i have in the next step so fine in the next step i have assembly phase what exactly is happening in the assembly phase? Whatever the program that I am getting. So please understand the phase receives the assembly level instructions. All my program will be in the form of assembly level instructions. So this assembly level instructions, I'm going to get converted into machine code. I'm going to get converted this assembly level, assembly level instructions into machine code. So that is what we will call it as a object code so we also call that machine code as object code so fine it's very simple now so i have that assembly level language okay my source code is in the assembly level language is it no it's in the high level that's what you need to notice it now so fine so it will go to the first step so it is in the pre-processing step okay it is in the pre-processing phase so my source code will be minus from comments i will be removing the comments in the first phase so that is what you need to remember so fine in the second phase what happens in the second phase i will have two steps in the first step so i will i will prepare a symbol table i will prepare a symbol table in the second phase i will prepare a tree so table and tree so please remember with t square that is the second phase when it comes to third one okay so i will get all my instructions in the assembly level so assembly level 2 i will convert it into machine code this is what you need to remember so this is the three steps that we have discussed we understood it's in the assembly level instructions when it reaches the third stage so it will get converted into machine code so what next so linking should happen so you told the uh, system will understand the machine code then why do you need the next step you could have executed the machine code right the computer understand the machine codes right then why do you need this linking step linking phase why do we need this linking phase so please understand in my program a lot of linking to the libraries should happen what exactly it means sir? Whenever I write my program, I will not write everything on my own. I would have used or the program would have consumed a lot of predefined functions. What exactly predefined functions is all about, sir? Predefined functions in the sense, say for example, I'm writing a program in that I have used a function called square root. A function called square root. So I have not written any special code or a special program to use or to calculate the square root i have just called that particular function in my program then how the computer will get to know that if i use sqrt it should calculate the square root of a given number so for that function i have written the function i have defined the function and i have stored it in the library 
So for that, the linking should happen. Say for example, you are using the function called square root. How the computer will come to know that if I write SQRT in the sense it should calculate the square root of a given number. So for that, the linking should happen. Where should, where do you need to link? So I have the library here. I have the library. So library is a collection of such predefined functions. So if you have used any of the predefined functions, in this phase, the linking will happen. In this phase, the linking will happen is what you need to remember. So find the object code received by this phase very much in a binary code, but still the computer cannot execute because it needs to link to the libraries because it is you have used but you have not linked suppose if you have not linked or if you have not used predefined functions then you can you don't have to link anything suppose if you have used then you cannot execute though it is in the machine code that's the important point that you need to remember so fine the part of the compiler which performs the linking of the library is called linker so what is linker now? Hope you understood. The person, the guy who does the linking is what I will call it as a linker. Is there anybody like that, sir? No, I'm just kidding. Guys, the process of linking the predefined functions to the library is what I will call it as a linker. So fine, we understood what is linker now. So what is the next phase? So it's a very important phase. You have done everything. So what is that pre-processing you have done? So you have done the uh, second phase, you no know, compilation process you have done. The third phase, assembly phase you have done. Linking phase you have done. The last one is loader. What exactly loader is all about? The loader is a part of the compiler that loads the computer executable module into the memory for execution. You need to remember one thing at this point of time, whatever we execute, so that will get executed inside the RAM. So who will load everything, the file, whatever you have. So that should be loaded to the RAM, right? So who will do that? Loader will do that. Loader is responsible to load the executable files to the RAM is what you need to remember. So fine, this is one of the important points that you need to understand. So we understood the loader also. So fine, I have summed up everything whatever I have discussed in today's session in one simple diagram if you know if you just go through this diagram the whole class is in the diagram so I, I'll show you how so this is you okay the programmer who who is generating the source code so fine source code is there and then so what happens here analysis is happening okay what happened what, what is happening here analysis is happening and synthesis is happening you all know that so before this analysis Pre-processing should happen, okay? Pre-processing should happen, removing the comments. After that analysis is happening, you are identifying the tokens and you are forming a symbol table, all right? After that, you have the synthesis. Synthesis in the sense, you are trying to generate the syntax tree, okay? So you are trying to generate the syntax tree. Then after that, assembly, okay? So for that, assembly phase. Next one is assembly phase. So you are passing whatever you have. So you are passing all the instructions in the form of assembly level instructions. So by the end of that phase, you will get the object code. So which is almost equal to the machine code, but you cannot execute. So to execute that, the linking should happen. So linking will happen with the standard libraries. So once the linking is done, so please understand once the linking is done, so you will use the libraries object codes all these things you will use for linking so after that so you will load you will load everything to the memory for the execution so that is what you need to understand so once it is done your files will be converted into dot exe and then it will be loaded to the memory is what you need to remember please don't forget that so this is how the compilation process is happening this is what you need to remember by saying this let me wind up the session today Please take care of your health, take care of your family. I will sign off. Thank you, everybody.